Well, good morning, everybody. This is your radio bishop, Bishop Willie Horn, right here at Radio KBRG, The Bridge. This is AM Coffee Talk, men of standard in the background. Praise God. We just want to say blessings to each and every one of you. Praise God. It's good to see you this morning. It's good for to be with you this morning. AM Coffee Talk, the, ho- the coffee house is open this morning, and we just want to say raise your cups to Jesus this morning. Amen. Raise your cups to Jesus because it is him that has made a way. It is him, praise God, that we move, that we live, that we breathe, that we have our being in him and him only. Praise God. Uh, as you see across the screen, praise God, you can call us uh, at any time within this within the program for, uh, from now until about eight for eight fifty six somewhere in that area. Praise God, where you can call, ask us questions. You can call us at seven six zero five nine six eighty one eighty four. That's seven six zero five nine six eighty one eighty four. If you have any questions for us, I'm your host, Bishop Willie Horn. The Brew Crew is in the house right here. Praise God, and you can call call us right now if you like. Praise God, say good morning. Praise God, and we'll say good morning right back to you. Praise God. This is Tuesday, so I see that this is a terrific Tuesday this morning for me. Praise God, it's terrific because I was able to open up my eyes. I was able to walk. I was able to greet my wife. I was able to to greet my brethren this morning in the prayer room i was i'm god had made it able i'm able praise god so i am grateful for all that he's doing in my life praise god and i know you're grateful for what god is doing in yours praise god you're catching us on different platforms this morning we're on youtube we're on spotify we're on uh facebook we're on uh you name it we're there (laughs) Amen Praise God But especially on Radio KBRG The Bridge Amen So just catch us on Radio KBRG this morning Tune in with your cell phones And your laptops And whatever you're using Praise God Whatever device you're on Praise God Go to your search engine And type in Radio KBRG.com And you'll go right to our webpage Take, Take the trip and hit the play button praise god it'll take you right here and in, into this platform and in this session of coffee talk live praise god also if you're on facebook and you're following you can follow bishop willie horn pray william horn rather amen uh or you can go to radio kbr radio station kbrg dash db which is digital broadcasting the bridge praise god catch that window praise god or you can go to our group page at radio station kbrg the uh db the bridge amen so either way anyway you can go there uh those to you that like periscope you can catch us on periscope this morning praise god periscope tv that's kbrg tv you can go to youtube to our youtube channel youtube tv page which is k radio kbrg or kbrg tv praise god we thank and praise God for the brew crew that are in the house this morning. We pre- we appreciate them for coming in, taking the time out and, and sitting in with us this morning. Praise God. So we're going to say hello to the crew in in the moment here. Amen. So uh, you guys just be, you guys, are you ready? Praise God. Amen. We're going to say hello to the crew. Praise God. And uh uh, and those of you that want to talk to the crew, don't, they, just remember they're right here with me, you know. So uh, if, if you say anything bad now, I'm going I'm to bump you and you won't be able to say nothing anymore. I'm going I'm to I'm slap a sensor on you. Praise God. So if you have something to say to the, to the men of God in the brew crew, hey. Just give us a call in uh, at 760-596-8184. Amen. For those of you that have cell phones, that's not a charge for you. So go ahead and call. If you're wondering if I'm going to be charged for this call, no, you're not. No, you're not. 
Amen. Amen. So just give us a call right now. If you want to speak to the crew, say good morning to the crew. The crew would like to say good morning to you personally. Praise God. 760-596-8184. Amen. We thank God. Uh, in the background right now is uh, Fred Hammond. Praise God. We're going to go ahead and, and take Fred Hammond out of the background. <laughs> so, and we're going to go right into... Uh, the radio itself, and you'll just hear us, just myself and the crew, you know. Uh, a songwriter out there in the world used to say, if you hear any noise, it's just me and the boys. Praise God. But in this room, we're preaching. Praise God. So it's me and the boys preaching. Amen. So uh, here we go. We're going to go to uh, Oakland, California this morning to see how things are going up in Oakland. We know there's some fires up north, praise God, in the wine country, praise God. So we want to see how things are going. Uh, all the acreage is gone. The, the many people have lost their homes, praise God. And our prayers go out to you that have lost your homes with by fire, praise God. And, and we have several fires in the Northern California area, but we, I don't know which one, uh, uh, pa Pastor Bishop Jones is near, praise God, but uh, he'll probably let us know. Good morning, Pastor Jones, praise God. Which one of those fires are you near? Are you, uh, uh, I, man, I went outside I'm, and left my phone outside, and uh, I guess about 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up, and I'm near all of them, San Francisco. Uh, uh, the fires over in Vacaville, Sonoma, Sonoma County. But I went outside and I could barely breathe. Mm. It, 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 I mean, the smoke is just, ooh, it's terrible. And I, and I was just going not even a block to my car. But I felt like the breath was being snatched from me and all you can smell is, is smoke. So, you know, I got to... Uh, be careful for my family today. Make sure everybody is dressed properly and that they know that the smoke is out there and it's trying to uh, do what it do, choke us or whatever. Amen. We we uh, we want to send a message out to you out there in the in the San Francisco in the Bay Area. Praise God. Make sure, make sure you wear your N95s. Amen. Uh, you need to. It, it's hard to breathe out there. If you got a, if you have masks that that not the the any kind of face mask right now will help you, but that won't help you to breathe. You know, the N95 may help you to breathe. Praise praise God. Uh, but if not, you're gonna need some type of of uh, uh, mask that's gonna help you to breathe out there. You don't want that. The, those carbons coming into your lungs amen so try to stay indoors as much as possible praise god and uh and keep a a circulation of air flowing into the house fresh air flowing into your homes uh stay off the streets praise god try to stay off the streets up in northern california try to see if you can get to some shelter somewhere praise god stay out of that stop breathing in that stuff it's not good for you amen so we're praying for you in Northern California. We're praying for all of my brothers and sisters and all of my people up in Northern California. You all my family. So uh, the KBRG high schools, the KBRG colleges, the KBRG restaurants, the KBRG coffee houses, amen, the KBRG stores, everything in Northern California belong to KBRG. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So y'all stay safe, please stay safe. Amen. And uh, if you are near a fire and they told you to evacuate, do what they ask you to do, please. Evacuate. Amen. Evacuate. Find somebody. You better make a friend. But find somebody that's not close to the fire so y'all can <laughs> <laughs> bunk up, you know. Amen. Yes, and the shelters that they have set, the emergency shelters that are set out there in Northern California, please utilize them. And those of you that are in the shelters, I know you listen to us on the radio, praise or listen to us on your phones. No, 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 the, note this. Don't steal from each other in those shelters. You understand? Be, be kind to one another in those shelters. 
Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to go to Palm Springs this morning. Amen. And, and see how the, the great, uh, the great one himself is doing over in Palm Springs. Amen. Evangelist Richard Kirk. What's going on in Palm Springs? Evangelist. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you have to say, when your troubles come your way, lift your hands to the Lord and say, hallelujah, anyhow. I remember that song a few years back. But anyway, praise God. Everything's going well. Hallelujah. Today's my daughter's birthday. Hallelujah. I want to wish my daughter a very happy and blessed birthday today. And uh, she's... Uh, I got a chance to talk to her yesterday. She's on vacation and she's enjoying herself. So praise God. Uh, other than that, I mean, I'm just uh, waiting on the Lord and believing God for some great things and definitely in prayer about the situation, about these fires and what have you, and especially these storms that are, are you know, coming upon the land and whatever. I think there's one supposed to hit uh, Louisiana or Texas. Yes. Uh, sometime on Thursday, I think it is. And it's a back-to-back -back storm. So uh, <clears throat> we really need to pray for God to uh, divert that, you know, send that elsewhere because that can do some damage. So, oh, yeah. you know, the weatherman says one thing, but uh, that storm has another thing another thing to say so but other than that blessings to all of our faithful listeners uh, locally nationally and worldwide and definitely blessings to uh uh praise god the ceo uh praise god bishop uh willie horn and first lady uh wendy horn and to the brew crew praise god amen we thank you, praise God, for Evangelist Richard Kirk over in Hemet, California. Praise God. I don't know if it's any fires near Hemet, but I know it's hot. It was hot in Hemet. Praise God for a minute. Amen. It's cooling down just a little bit. So uh, those of you that w hadn't been going outside, go ahead and go outside now. You know, and take your little walk, breathe in a little fresh air. Amen. Make sure you get in, get in back in the house before 90 degrees hit. Amen. So, good morning, uh, Elder Norman Fulbright. What's brewing over in Hemet, California? Well, what you just said is true. You know, the weather, you know, I praise God that, you know, we're supposed to have been in the 90s. But yesterday, I went out to my car, and it was 112 degrees. You know? and, and I praise God that because of the humility, it just makes it where it ain't no sh no coolness in the shade. But the weatherman is saying that, that that moisture is moving away from us now and going towards Arizona. So we should go back into our dry heat, you know. Mm. And when it's the dry heat, it don't feel as hot because you can't find a little shade, you know. But you know, I praise God, you know, for another day, you know, that. You got your cold days, you got your hot days, you know, you got your seasons. And whatever season it is, you got to see that God's going to let you make it through, you know. So, you know, I just praise God, you know. You know, we should be like learn some lessons about from the people of the Middle East that, that when it's really hot, they ain't got no air conditioning. You know, they know how to wear layers of clothes, you know. Yeah. You know, uh, to keep themselves cool, you know. But uh, we don't do that. We like to walk out there, the, the women in, in bikini, you know, clothing. Men want to still be in their bikers shorts, showing their six packs and all that stuff. And they just burning up. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you, man? You hating, you hating you know, this morning? No, no, I ain't. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm just saying that with this, with this, with this hot, hot season, yeah. If we would just learn from the people in the Middle East who don't be having all these air conditioners and fans, yeah. that there's a way that you can dress to keep yourself cool in this hot temperatures like this. They feel like it's true. 
They yeah, feel like they have they, to show themselves, you know, and uh, they want to walk the beaches. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know. That's California for you, y'all. That's California. Amen. And uh, that's why a lot of people who are drawn to California and Miami, Florida, and very places like that, you know, for the beaches. Amen. So, I don't know. Are the beaches open? Some Anybody? of them are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because, see, uh, the coronavirus right now, you know, we're 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 under the thousand people a day. I mean, we I think you they still in the nine hundreds, but they don't went from the thousands. Mm -hmm. And uh even in Los Angeles now it's been so many days that they haven't had, you know, anybody been infected in a certain area. So they're trying to open that area back up. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, uh, I just pray they just not moving too fast, uh, because again, <laughs> united we stand, divided we fall. Divided we fall. You know? Yeah, uh, the United States—that's just it. United States, you know, who had a government that helped to govern the United States, but if the government ain't go govern the United States, then every state is on its own, and every state doing its own thing. So what, we're going to start quarantine and having, you know, border checks, you know? You can't come into our, our state if your state been wide open, you know? Yes. Because we got our state under control, and we can't be having nobody coming here where y'all just party, you know, because I even got to say this, you know, last weekend was the first time that I have literally been in a public setting where there was standing room only. Mm. You know? I praise God and I observed that just about everybody did have a mask except for some other children. And then the mortuary officials themselves did not have a right. mask, you know. But, uh, I praise God, you know, for a good feeling. I praise God that the Lord spoke to me as to send the word. You see, you know, you ain't got to yeah. worry about this, you know. Uh, and I really believe that that's what God would have us to do right now, y'all. Is He said, "Don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him." So if if you're being wanting to go somewhere and you go before God. And I've heard Bishop Jones say this many times, even in his prayer. Lord, this is my agenda, but Lord, correct it, you know, because it ain't about my agenda. It's about what you want me to do. And if we feel, and, and Bishop Jones, you said this too. See, if you feel a conviction upon you that you need to be in the church building, you know, you need to know who's giving you that conviction. And if that's the Holy Ghost giving you that conviction, then you need to be well where the Holy Ghost is taking you because he, he's going to protect you. He ain't leading you down a path of, you know, unrighteousness. He's not leading you to death. The Holy Ghost is leading us into life, okay? So if we learn to just be obedient and hear and quit hearing what somebody's telling us, we, we will be showing the power of God, you know? You know? The, the only thing about, about it and Bishop, you know, we talked about this earlier. We would have, we would have the dark days of the Church of God in Christ would become the dark days of the church today. Mm. Of who's gonna be the leader? Okay, because we would have people cutting each other's throats and stabbing in the back and shooting them, man. If you stand in the way of me being the leader, mm -hmm. you know. So they then I got it all wrong. You ain't got to fight to be the leader. If God that made you a leader, then God will open up the doors for you. Right. Okay. You know, uh, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna stop. Uh, I was in a church one time when the pastor stood up and said, "You know, we ought to take the take away the titles." And when he said that, somebody raised their hand and said, "Well, pastor, we took away the title. Who we know who the leaders are." And I, I mm -hmm. had to praise God for his response. He said, all you got to do is sit back and watch and see who the people go to. Who do the people go to for instructions? Who do the people go to for help? That's the leader. Okay? And sometimes the leader is not the one sitting in the pulpit. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, that's in, that's interesting. Amen. I thank you, praise God, for uh, uh, the men of God that joins us here every morning. Praise God. And then those of you that join us every morning, morning after morning, we want to say thank. We want to thank you for for supporting AM Coffee Talker in the morning. Uh, in the news, a lot of things are transpiring in the news. I mean, there's all kind of uh, bad news around around the uh, United States. Praise God. But uh, we got some good news. We have some good news. And I say in all of uh, and, and in the midst of all of this, we have some good news, y'all. Mm -hmm. Churches are starting to meet. People are beginning to fellowship. Praise God. They're getting back into the the mood and the mode of fellowshipping and beginning. And we're able to see each other now other than on video camera, you know. So that's good news. Praise God. That's good news that the the that the uh, people of faith are coming together and and worshiping. Amen. Around the globe. Praise God. So but uh, I can you can go to mainstream news and get all the bad news. Praise God. Uh, we 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 handled that this morning in prayer. Praise God. So uh, I just want to say that that's for another uh, program, another another uh, show. Praise God that we'll talk about the the bad news that is going around. But here on this platform, we're gonna we're gonna tell you what's good. Praise God. And who's greater and who's good? Christ is. He's good. Amen. God is good amen we used to say that at church god is good all the time and all the time god is good we don't hear that no more bishop jones we're gonna kind of people kind of just they're so caught up in what's going on in the world praise god what is wrong with us this morning that we're so caught up in what's going on in the world have we forgotten that? go ahead distraction distraction is what's going on uh Sometimes we're distracted by so many things that we we don't even acknowledge that it's a blessing for us to wake up in the morning. And that's just a drop of the raindrops that God drop on us uh, daily. You know, there are so many different areas where we can declare God's goodness. Uh, but. If we're distracted by things, you know, or even get distracted by our own day. I know I jumped up yesterday and, and uh, you know, went about my day trying to do things. Amen. And if you're not careful, you'd be distracted by what you got to do and won't even be able to see that God is grace is all over. It's just tripping, following, me. you know, like uh, David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God is good. He's good all the time. Amen. And he, even when we figure it out, uh, you know, he, 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 he's been good all the way through the whole thing. But sometimes we figure out it's just, you know, I, I just got to check. Oh, God is good. But God was good through the, all the other stuff too. But we just realized that he's good when we get checked. Hmm. It's good when we get a check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, we we seem to be moved more by material things uh, and be able to acknowledge God's goodness uh, by material things than we are. Uh, just like uh, you were sharing uh, about your dream and about the elders being able to sit together when God gives you wisdom. That's a part of God's. Uh, goodness as well. Yes. If God give us love or if whatever God give us, you know, it's a part of his goodness. But we won't acknowledge it sometime until we get something material. Amen. Amen. I thank God. Uh, uh, this morning, I, I, I like to ask a question. Uh, have we, have anybody been uh, setting their, their, their sights on what's going on in the Middle East? You know, as far as the Christians are concerned, did anybody anybody check that out? The president President Trump made a speech uh, in regards to the the criminal acts towards Christians in the in the Middle East, 
and uh, he also made some statements in regards to uh, uh, Israel and the United Arab Emirates uh, formulating a peace. Uh, and he thought he believes that if they formulate a peace, that that it would help in the struggle of persecuted Christians in the Middle East. Uh, I I don't know, you know I I don't know by you know the Arabs and the Israel and Israel coming together at, on a peaceful terms if it would stop or uh, if it would slow down. Uh, Christians being persecuted in the Middle East. Uh, I put that out there on the table. What do you think? You think that by them coming in, in, on peaceful terms that it would slow down the, the persecution of, of Christians in the Middle East? Well, I, I, I think that uh, it, it would, I guess, to an extent, did uh, help for uh, Christianity to, to be allowed because the reason that uh, the persecution is because Christianity is not allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, the, the tolerance of each other, you know, we don't have a tolerance of each other because even though we don't, uh, we don't kill Muslims, you know, sometimes we assassinate their character or we assassinate their religion. But yeah, I think it would bring a type of uh, slowing down. Amen. Okay. Elder, what do you think? Well, the thing is to me is that it's a lot of uh, hidden agendas, okay? Uh, believe me, in every agreement, you got to have lawyers to be able to define what's being said mm -hmm. because agreement can be so easily broken. You know, you, you said you would come together in peace and all of a sudden somebody done broke that deal right away. Uh, the Bible said there's going to be rumors of wars. You know, there's going to be earthquakes. You see, this is natural. Okay, this this stuff happens because of the disobedience of man. Okay, mm -hmm. it goes back to what we talked about maybe about some four five months ago when we were talking about the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We got the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and in the kingdom of heaven, there's violence often. Okay, see, you see, we keep looking at and say the Christians. Well, Jesus said, I got some other sheep that's of another flock, but I'm bringing them all together because it's just going to be one, okay? Uh, can, can we mingle with the others? You know, right here in the United States, you know, Sunday's the most segregated hour, and that's the hour when we all do what? Go before God in our worship, hmm. but we separate ourselves. Why? Because I can't stand to hear that gospel music. I can't stand to hear that Latin. I can't expect to. We can't get along down here. So even on the, in the Middle East, okay, they keep making agreements, and then they break them, okay? Hmm. Uh, right now, uh, America is talking about giving the Arabs, you know, the fighter jets, the, the, the 35s, which Israel is looking and said, you give that, you take away our superiority that we had over them because you can give them these same jets. You know what I'm saying? So is it about money? Okay. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. And when we got leaders, it's really just looking at the, the dollars that's coming in. Because one of the things that we've been finding out that it even happened in Israel we, we got too many people that's easily to be bribed now, man. They're doing a lot of uh, crooked stuff to stay in power. But when they're in power, they're receiving too many wrong gifts that they're taking for their own personal self. So when I listen to them talking about coming up with a peace treaty, I, I, I've heard that so much. And I've always seen it right after it's done. Somebody breaks it. So... 
what was the purpose of coming together and say we had this peace treaty? Because we wanted to make it look good. Look what we did. Look what we did. But it didn't last. So your fruit was, is not edible. So mm, what, what's that saying to you? God ain't in it. God ain't in it. Hmm. Okay. Amen. Yes, sir, Pat, uh, Evangelist Kirk. Well, praise God. You know, that peace, when we're talking about peace, you know, there are certain entities that could care less about peace. And I'm talking about the Hezbollah. Uh -huh. you know, I'm talking about ISIS. Just recently, uh, they feel that ISIS has attacked uh, an oil refinery or somewhere over there in Syria. Huh. See? And we got to realize that there are radical Muslims that could care less about peace. And the word of God tells us when they shall say peace, peace, then what's going to happen? And sudden destruction will come. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. we cannot be uh swayed by that peace i mean yes we would love for there to be peace but unfortunately that's not what the word says and they've made peace before and it's like praise god elder fulbright said you know, they break those peace agreements Pretty quick. That's true. And they, you got to remember, those people stick together over the Mid East, even if they don't fully agree with them. But they do stick together. But they you do. Know? Yes, they do. Because they're all under the what? The Quran. Okay. All right. But Jesus, what did Jesus say? Let's go back to Jesus. Jesus said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, whose trust is in the Lord. That's in Isaiah. Praise God. I believe it's, uh, what is that? Isaiah 623. If I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. My brothers. I don't worry, uh, we will. Yeah, 26, 3, 4. Yeah. Right, right. And, uh, you know, these, uh, these things have I said unto you that in me, you might have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. All these things are coming to pass, just like Jesus said they would come to pass. Yes, sir. So, you know. These things have I said in you that in me you might have peace in the world. You're going to have tribulation. But what? Be of good cheer. For I overcame the world. My peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yeah. You know what? It's funny you brought that, that, that particular scripture up because uh, uh, a lot of times, uh, we feel that since we have come into Christ, that there will, you know, that our environment uh, that's around us would change just because we came to Christ, mm. you know, and 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 I don't know. I think we've been taught that. I, I'm not really sure, but I will say this: we've been told that we can change our environment, but. I believe that's your inner environment. I don't think you can change your, your community but just because you save. You know, uh, you can you could change persons one by one. You know, uh, I believe it's a one, one on one and the Holy Spirit can change a community, of course, if they all repent and come to him. But uh, what do you mean by peace? You know, uh, if you have all of this destruction around you, what type of peace is he talking about? 
that we have? Well, we 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 have an inner peace uh, that 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 Christ gave us, and we also have a peace with God because we were uh, the enemies of God in our sin, you know. And the greatest thing that we can do is embrace salvation uh, and be able to see that even though it's chaotic around us, amen, that God has blessed us with peace. Uh, the, the slowing down of the persecution of the Christians over in the Middle East could happen, but that's not. Uh, you know, I believe that some of those people who are being persecuted have a peace that the world don't, don't understand. Okay, I believe that they have a, a peace that the world don't understand. And when uh, President Trump is talking about peace, he's talking about uh, them not being so uh, so persecuted all the time. But uh, all, you, when you read the Bible, Bishop. Wow. And all they was doing was telling uh, the apostles to stop preaching Jesus. Right. That's all they had to do was stop preaching Jesus. They wouldn't have had to go to the jail. They wouldn't have been whooped. They wouldn't. All they had to do was stop uh, preaching Jesus. But something on the inside wouldn't let them stop preaching Jesus. They knew something, and they had to tell it. And kind of, you know, Jeremiah kind of gave us a, a glimpse of it, you know? Even if we say we're not going to speak no more, the word of God burns in us like a fire. Uh, 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 yes, peace. yes. So yes. there is a peace that the world doesn't understand that we possess, uh, and it's not based off of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what the world sees as peace. Ah. It's not based off of uh, Oh, I, I believe that there's a persecution coming among the saints in, in the United States that that we're not prepared for. But if you really saved, it's not going to bother you because you're going to have peace. Even if you got to die for what you believe, you're still going to have peace in that. Hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, because you know, I, I like to jump in on that because what Bishop Jones said, is absolutely true. And and I praise God that a lot of people still to this day don't understand that Acts 1 and 8. You know, after the Holy Ghost has come, you shall receive power to become witnesses. Okay. And I praise God for that word witnesses in the Greek means martyr. Hmm. Okay. Uh in other words. The Holy Ghost is what gives you the peace and the ability to die for what you believe. Because mm -hmm. if you are a true witness, if you don't say that G whatever you don't testify that was true, you cannot retract your statement because then you become what? A false witness. Mm. Okay. And so to that point, that and, and, and I'm glad Bishop Jones went into that because see. The ones that's over there in the Middle East, the Christians, hmm. you, I'm, I'm hoping that you're over there because God not led you over there, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're over there on your own mission, that's a different story, okay? But if you are led by God, then God's going to be your protection, even to the point of up unto death. Because uh, I used to wonder, you know, they would feed them to the lions. It was burning a mistake. You mean nobody was whimpering? Nobody was crying, saying, I'm sorry, I didn't mean this and all that? No, they died happily, knowing that they were going, their spirit was going to be with God, that they were making a mark on the world that I'd rather die for what I believed than to become a false witness. So, Acts 1 and 8, if the person that really received that Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost, now, there's only supposed to be one, but there's some people that tell me they got the Holy Ghost. Here. Brother, I don't know what that ghost is, okay? He ain't holy, okay? But the Holy Ghost will give you the ability to be bold even unto death. 
as to not renou renouncing what you believe. Okay. Praise God. Look, look at Stephen. Wait, wait, let, me, let me just say this because, because which of us would denounce God because somebody put a gun to your head and then because you denounced God, they didn't kill you. Don't you know that you're finna die in your own spirit right now? You're finna be worse than Judas who betrayed Jesus, okay? Because you, you are, are never going to be able to erase that moment that you literally denounce what you believe just so that nobody would kill you. Come on, man. That's, you, you that's rather, what you got. die in the glory of God than to live with that on this side that I betrayed him, I denounced him so that I could do what? Live? What kind of life am I finna live? All right. Evangelist Kirk, what you got to say? I'm you. Stop muting yourself. <laughs> well, no, I didn't want to be making noise with me turning the pages on the Bible. Oh, okay. Praise God. You know, when we get into eight, when we get into, praise God, the seventh chapter of the book of Acts, uh -huh. hallelujah, we have a, uh, a beautiful example about the peace of God. Okay. Uh, and praise God. You know, and this is when Stephen was being stoned, you know, huh. and uh, Stephen just really went into it. And let's see here. You said the, se uh, the seventh chapter of Acts? Yes, in the seventh chapter yeah. of Acts. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, let's see, because Steve Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, he was full of the Holy Ghost. He got himself killed. Uh, he got himself killed for uh, running his mouth. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> because he, I mean, he called them stiff necked and everything. Yeah, he went on. He, oh, here it is. Here it is. Praise God. Uh, and I'm not going to go into detail, but when you get a chance, Read that seventh chapter, listeners. Praise God. And you will see the boldness that Stephen had. He said, uh, and we'll start with verse uh with name with verse fifty-four. But prior to that, you're gonna see where he's gonna he kind of gave a uh uh oh what do I wanna say a uh 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 he well he said anyway. he gave an edict towards the those that didn't know and wasn't doing right, and obeying right. God. Yeah. So in verse fifty five, it says, and this was the Holy Spirit just showed me. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God uh -huh. and said behold I see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of God then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young meat young man's feet whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, look at this. You think he didn't walk with a mind of Christ? My God, of all the things that he could say, after being tormented so, the Holy Ghost gave him the boldness, and he was able to see Jesus Praise God on the right hand of the Father uh -huh. to know that this is soon going to be over. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to be with you, Lord. So I can take this 
This ain't nothing. This is temporal. See, but I'm getting ready to come before you. But what did he say? Even as Jesus said when he was on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But look at what he says. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Oh, so death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where's that victory? If you're in Christ and you die, you don't feel nothing. Okay, so is that where he uh, discovered that he got his peace? Uh, uh, well, did he have peace prior to that? I believe he had peace prior to that because it gave him the boldness to really expound, it was like a, a, a crash course in history. Hmm. Well, the people are... And he talked I, about, I also, he talked also, about the also, Son of God. I would mm -hmm. also... I, I, I think the yeah, scripture he be, is, is... Yeah, he had to be before him because the Bible says, and by him going with Stephen, Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, he just didn't get full of the Holy Ghost because he started talking to them. He was already filled with the Holy Ghost. Exactly. We just see that this is an incident where him being filled with the Holy Ghost that he was talking to some stiff necked people, and he called them that. Yes, he did. He called them on the carpet as to who they were. And he let it be known, y'all the ones who like crucified Christ. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay? And they dashed at him to kill him. Okay. Yeah, they they bit him. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, they bit him. But, but look, look at look at what look at what the scripture says. The guarantee is that if we keep our mind stayed on him, that he will keep us in perfect peace. Yeah. Now I don't know when you when you bishop attach the word perfect uh, to peace. I don't even know what that means uh, because. Peace, you know, of course, when we get saved, God gives us this peace. Uh, but perfect, when, when a peace is perfect, uh, it's not interrupted by nothing. Not interrupted by nothing. And, and so that we know that Stephan's peace was there before because it was a peace that came from him keeping his mind on the Lord. Yes. We, yes. we got that same thing offered to us. If we keep our minds staying on the Lord, mm -hmm. all this stuff, you know, uh, I was listening to Pastor Fulbright talking earlier, and sometimes God might tell us to wear masks, and sometimes he might not tell us to wear masks. Sometimes he might tell us to stay home. Sometimes he might tell us to go home. But if I get the instructions from God, that within itself creates a peace. Because I'm doing what God has told me to do. And even if something happens, because in Stefan's case, it wasn't that nothing, you know, because he did what God told him to do, he, his life was spared. No, his life was taken, was, was demonstrated during his death when he said, don't lay the sin to their charge. He could have been praying for a lot of other stuff, but he was praying for the people that were stoning him. Right. And look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. He said, who, and, and the word of God tells us, who for the joy that was set before him, set before who? Set before the Okay. Uh, okay. What happened to him? Kind of went out sound? there. You know, you know, I just want to cover it. What did he do? He endured the cross. Oh, he came back. <laughs> he endured the cross. Uh huh. You know? Uh huh. Who, for the joy that was before him, endured the cross, uh -huh. despising the shame. 
What was the joy that was before him? Be with the Father in heaven. That was Jesus' joy we before him. Came from the Father. We, are, we, we were all the, all the greatness. Were all the Wait. love. We we are the joy. Uh, our, this our salvation is the joy that was set before him. Mm. You know us, oh, yeah. uh, being free from the wrath of God. See, you know that's. That was the joy that was set before him. Right. And, and, and I even want to say this, you know, uh, a lot of people don't recognize that there's a saying you, you got, the people say, oh, I got peace with God, okay? But there's another phrase, the peace of God, okay? Mm -hmm. Having peace with God means that we're not in conflict. That's right. all it that means. Yeah. But it don't mean that I have what God got. I'm just at peace with him the way we're not battling. But when you got the peace of God, that's that perfect peace the bishop was just talking about. It's God. Because mm -hmm. God's the one that's perfect. Okay. Yes. And when you got the peace of God, then that means that you got ownership. So if you are of God, because we were created in his image, we were made in his likeness, he breathed into us the spirit, his spirit. And so, therefore, when we have his peace, then that means that I'm not rattled by nothing that's going on, okay? Uh, I believe that that's what the lessons were teaching us when it came to the disciples being with Jesus in the boat. Because he always asked them, where is your faith? Why are you so fearful, okay? I'm your example. Do you see me being fearful? So again, when we got the peace of God, there ain't nothing that's rallying us. We're not afraid of anything because we have the peace of God. We got that calmness, that tranquility within yes, ourselves. Yes, that yes, nothing Lord. is bothering yes, us. You, you can talk about me all you want. You can talk about my family all you want. Mm -hmm. Now, I do praise God for this, is that he's going to protect me when you ain't putting your hands on me. But if you do put your hands on me, then even what he told Peter in that John, that 21st chapter, the time going to come when you're going to be led where you will not go. And he was talking about Peter being crucified. If it's for us to die for what we believe, then we're going to do it. Okay. I don't see nobody whipping out and running and then, oh, no, no, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Okay. I see a whole lot of folk doing that, you know, and they got Jesus, I and I don't want to die. There's a bunch well, of folk like that. Yeah, I, I see a lot of that too, Bishop. I see a lot of people, and in, 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 uh, it's it's a scary thing because here here's the dilemma. I preach about how great my God is, but then I act like I don't believe that He's great. Right. I fear everything that comes against me. While at the same time preaching how powerful my God is. See, that's the spirit of the Pharisees. See, it's, they it's knew God, what to God say. Great. They knew what to it's, say, but they couldn't do it. They couldn't perform it. Let me finish, uh, uh, Pastor. Come on, brother. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> He's <Okay>. excited. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> we get excited, y'all. <laughs> but, but 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 that that's 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 where you know uh the conflict in our message the, the message that we live and the message that we preach mm -hmm. is a problem it's a problem it's it's a real conflict in it because either our god is great or he's not great and i think that a lot of time you know even the whole little episode about uh when 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 the uh, boy got shot down by the police and uh, you know everybody started talking about God and then we went to the government we didn't go to God we went to the government to tell them why they need to change stuff and uh -huh. they don't hold our they they do not hold our freedom God holds our freedom God holds our healing He holds our freedom. He holds everything and so that's why He's here for us to go to Him. So now, you know, these is, these is, I mean, they got, had a guy got killed uh, maybe last night or the night before. 
it, it, it hasn't slowed down because we went to the government. It only is slow down if we do the rest. Our God is great. And he mm-hmm. is, uh, God will protect us. God mm-hmm. will protect us, but if it's, if it's his will for us to die, mm-hmm. we'll die. But mm-hmm. remember that God is the avenger as well. So, so our death is not in vain. God is going to avenge our death. Okay. So, you know, we, I don't know. It's it's a fear that that rests in the church now that wasn't in the church in the book of Acts. They came out and they said, we thank you that we were found worthy to suffer on behalf of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Now mm-hmm. that's something. It sure did. That's something right there. You know, and then then we're teaching people, well, you don't have to suffer now. You know, you don't have to suffer. You don't have to go through nothing. As soon as you get Christ in your life, all things work together for your good. You know, we we, we, we tell them that. But then when they go through suffering, when they go through trials, when they go through the fire, then they looking at us like we crazy. Like, well, holy dude, <laughs> you told me that I wasn't going to suffer, but I'm suffering. Let me say this, for in as much as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise yeah. with the same mind for he that has suffered in the flesh has what? From sin. And, and, and remember, Jesus told Peter that yeah, about the cross that he would have to bear. You know, right. he said he That's told right. him, "You can't bear this cross. You, you you can't hang." You know, I'm trying to tell you right now, you can't handle this. You know, but then again, it changed, whereby he empowered them to handle it. You know, because a man yes, gonna stand up there and don't 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 take a mad dash to 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 the to exit stage left and knowing somebody getting ready to stone him, man, he should have been kicking up his heels and running, but he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He should have been kicking up his heels and running. But you know what they did? They rushed this dude before he could run, and they started biting on him and, and carrying on and, and, and plucking him and, you know, doing all kind of stuff to this guy and then brought him out into the city and stoned him. So they beat him up before they even stoned him. That's right. Yeah. They mobbed him, you know. Yeah. Are, yeah. You, are we willing, are we ready to be pers- to go sure. through this type of persecution in this day and time, you know, we're so focused on question. police officers shooting, and we're so focused on uh, 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 Black Lives Matter that we're not even focused on Christ anymore. You know, we're more focused on my justice, yeah. and how and, you know we need justice. I, I'm, I'm not a disagreeing with you. It should be we do need a, a just system. But has this system ever been just? Ever? Y'all think about that for a minute. Has this system ever been just? No, not. No. So why are you praying for something that has never been? The only just system is God's system. That's the only just system on the planet. And he's not even on this planet. He's in heaven. And his kingdom is just. His kingdom. And we go to the government like they like they have like they have the power to bring justice. No, they, they don't. Who, but who do we represent? We represent the kingdom of God. Do we? The kingdom of God rules over all kingdoms they bow down yes that's what we have to realize they will because the kingdom of god is in you god the father god the son god the holy spirit walks up and down in you you have been given power but ye shall, but you shall receive power 
after that, the Holy Ghost says, what come upon you? So we got two different kingdoms operating on the planet. That's kingdom right. of God. Oh, you got oh, you got more kingdoms. The kingdom of the devil. The well, well, uh, the, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the devil. Okay. Yes. Now, there's only two kingdoms. Well, you got other rep you got representatives within within that kingdom. You know, the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of God. You got the kingdom of darkness. That, you got the that's kingdom Satan. Of darkness. That's Satan. Okay, so we're saying the same thing, two different words. So if there's, on, there's two kingdoms that's represented here on earth, but as you look at it, the kingdom that's, the, uh, that's on earth represents itself. We represent the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Okay, yes. it represents itself. And it does not bow down to no kingdom other than, and it don't even bow down to itself. You know what I'm saying? He, we, he will bow. But up to this point, he hasn't. He will bow. But up to this point, he hasn't. Oh, he will bow. Yes, he will bow. Yeah, you see, you see that, we're talking the future. But the right now, is he bowing now? No, I, I, I think uh, that in some instances, like, you know, uh, if, if, if someone is stricken with sickness and, and, and we come in the name of Jesus and God heals them, right? Uh, I think that's a form of Satan bowing down to the power. But in what you're talking about, Bishop, no, he hasn't bowed down. And 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 uh, I don't know why Satan worked twenty four seven, but we think that we can work on Sunday. And 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 cow control over him, you know, Satan, you under <laughs> my control right now. I'm commanding you to do this, that, and the other. The kingdom of the devil has not bowed, but he will bow at the appointed time. And it's in the scripture where he'll bow at the appointed time. Yes, sir. But right now, we're playing for peace on earth. It ain't happening. It's it not going to happen. You're going to have your inner peace. You're going to have your peace with God. And, and as Pastor Fulbright said, the peace of God, you will have that because he promised that. But he never promised us world peace. He never promised us that. So why are we praying for that? That's a good question that, that, that throws out. Why do we keep praying for peace on earth when he didn't, pray, he, he didn't promise us that? See? And so I, I, I want, but we do want, he, it is his desire that men be saved. Saved from what that's the question you need to ask yourself saved from whom saved from what see yes, sir. and that's the question you saints need to ask yourself okay he wants he wants that all he 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 would that all men be saved saved from what and from whom See, that's the question one has to ask themselves. You see, we want world peace. We always tell you, 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 look, you look at these models that come on at Miss Universe and Miss America and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, that was the that was the cliche uh, uh, statement, you know, that they just walk across the stage. And what do you, what do you want to see happen in the world? I'm, I want a world peace. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the Bible don't even speak of that. He said there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Is there any peace in that? No. Nope. Kingdom is against kingdoms. Kingdoms any against kingdoms. Any peace in that? No. Nation against nation. He said the peace of God. And you have to get the peace of God. That means you're being extracted from 
what's, what's taking place. You're protected. You get the full counsel of God in you. The full counsel. You have the protection. You have security. You have, you have uh, everlasting life. Your name is written in the book of life. You might be experiencing some little trials and tribulations here on earth. True. But the thing of it is, you don't have to worry about it. Why? Because I've, I've, I've removed you from it. Now, is that going to affect everybody around you? May or may not. It's up to them. They need to accept and repent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need to do that. It's an individual thing, y'all. Everybody has to do this on an individual basis. Even a husband yes, and a wife is still individual. Why? Because this, the, the, the relationship is between the person and God. We all have to work out our salvation. Yes. What fear and trembling. Right. We cannot do it for somebody else. They must do it for themselves. We can pray for them. We can intercede for them. We can, we can pray and ask God to, to guide them and, and draw them. Praise God. But that's it. That's as far as we can take it. Yes, you know? sir. That's as far as we can take it. And, and I think we, we, we think like we, we're God. You know, we can take it to the next level. You know, I could pray in my whole house to be saved. That may be true, but they still have to step up to the plate themselves. Each individual. That's you right. Know, Bish, you know, as you say, that, uh, a lot of us have read the Beatitudes time and time again. Mm hmm but we, we don't really understand that first one where he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, and you just hit on it. See, yeah, we got the power to pray. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we're not the one who makes it happen. That's right. God has to be the one who makes it happen. You know, so we're limited as to what we can do. Okay. That's right. We, we, we can't make nobody get saved. That's right. Wait a minute. We can't make nobody be healed. No, we can't. We can pray that they be healed. That's right. But God mm -hmm. got to be the one who do what? The, the word. healing. He does. Yes. It's not us yes. doing it. We don't do okay? it. We don't do it. We're just a conduct. So, so, so when we yeah. realize really who we are, yeah, what I'm makes us with, perfect yeah, is us putting theology. God in it. Yeah. But when we think that we can stand on our own little authority mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. rebuke that devil and all that, yeah. I'm going to tell you that devil going to whoop you just like he did. slap you upside and hit you in the back of your head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm saying, I know you are messing with your church theology now. Well, that's, that's too well, bad. Yeah, I'm messing with church theology because when I put my hands on you and when I pray for you, God is gonna yeah, messing with church theology. Look. Yeah, I know because I done heard some prophecy. Uh if I be a if I be a prophet from God, God is healing me right now. You know, if I'm a prophet, if I'm a prophet, you know what I'm saying? Uh and again, yes, Mr. Sean, I agree with you. See, I'm not sitting here to preach no church doctrine. No. I'm here to preach the doctrine of Christ. That's okay? right. If, and if, if the, the doctrine of Christ offends you, then so be it. So be it. Okay? You know, you, you, you want to you wanna slander me with, you know, and say I'm no good. Find out about my background history. Yeah. You might find yeah. some things to say. I didn't know Fulbright went to jail one time. I didn't realize yeah. he was burned one time. I didn't realize that he beat up people at one time. Yeah. 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 I, we we've done but, some but, bad things. But, but but I don't I don't do those things no more. No more. And Thank I've you, Jesus. The truth. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. See, I was in the CME <laughs> church. Okay. Right. I learned the doctrine of the CME. I learned the doctrine of the Baptist. I yeah. learned the doctrine of the Church of God in Christ. Right. Okay. I see that all of them took a little bit of something out. Yeah. And all of them added a little bit of something in. Right. So they were no longer really operating in the true kingdom. They went about establishing their, their own, own kingdoms. kingdoms. That's right. Okay. So I, wait a minute, and, though. But I am anointed, man. I am anointed. And, 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 uh, sure you and are. Call me. 
Uh, yeah, they need to call me over around the world because when I put my hands on people, it's gonna happen. Because I can make God do it. <laughs> I, when I speak the word, God will do it. You lying. God does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and how he wants to do it. You know, even if it's written in the script, God can change it if he wants to because he's sovereign. You see, and that's the lesson that we don't teach people today. God is sovereign. If he don't heal you, we know he's able. If he don't deliver you, we know he's able. Because he has his reasons why he don't want to do it. Because he know you better than I know you. See what I'm saying? Yes, he knows sir. me better than you know me. So you heard about some things about me, but you don't know me. God knows you, and he knows me. And he said, listen here, I'm going to tell you something. I, the reason why I ain't delivering horn, because horn know why I'm not delivering horn, and I know why I'm not delivering horn. You see, you cry how you want to. I'll do it when I'm ready. <laughs> okay, because I'm God, and I can do that. And people don't like to hear that kind of talk, uh, Pastor Fulbright. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear all the sweet, sweet stuff. You know, if I pray, Pastor, but you pray for me and God heal me. And if he don't, what's your, what, what, what's your exit strategy? What's your end game? What is it that you think you need to do? You see, because I can pray over you and you can be laden with sin. And this, and if you don't repent, the sin won't well, you know it's still uh, if not forgiven. Why? Because it's, you didn't repent. Mm -hmm. And I could pray all day and all night. That's right. Yeah, I mean, if you if you, if you regard iniquity in your heart, the Lord will not hear you. Not okay. Yet. What you saying, Elder? You got to get your heart. Well, no, I, I was just oh. saying that we we got too many people who are seeking people to pray. In mm -hmm. these situations, mm -hmm. but they're not willing to change. No. Okay. So you stay. They want God to. They want God to do this, and they want God to do that. Mm -hmm. He's all powerful, like you said. Right. But God, I'm not listening to you when you're telling me that I need to change. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I'm still mad at, at this woman down the street because uh -huh. she stole my husband uh -huh. some ten years ago. Yeah. And she got to live in a house that he had built for me. Yeah, the you house know, of Jack. Did. So, see, we we got a lot of people who do not want to do the change. They 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 take pleasure in fasting. They take pleasure yeah. in asking yeah, God things, but yet they refuse to. Forget. How many people are always saying, "God, please forgive me"? Lord, All the time. Me for going to the club last night. Lord, All forgive the time. me for laying with that woman. Lord, forgive me for lying, but yet you don't repent. You, you don't you repent. You still do it. You yeah. on a merry go round. Every day, same you're thing. Asking God to forgive you for your sins, but then the next morning you're asking God to do it again because you you you, you pray for Him to do it, but you didn't change. Look, you didn't change. It, look, Bella Fulbright, you, stop. You you, you giving them too much. Yeah, look. But sometimes they repent for the sin they're gonna do tomorrow today. Oh man, wait a minute. You you know what? <laughs> you ain't repent. That's still not repentance. You know? I, I repentance. Know I'm not to go oh, God. I I Come on, Lord, now. forgive me for what I'm getting ready to do tomorrow. That's premeditated <laughs> sin. You on your you way. Really, you know what? Y'all really knock it off. The truth there. You don't premeditate no the... sin and ask God to forgive yeah. you for it before you yeah. do it because that. Hey, huh? Mr. Hart, Mr. Hart. <laughs> premeditated. That's premeditated. If, if, if you took this, see, phone, I know I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Yeah. So I just <laughs> ask for your forgiveness before yeah. I do it. You okay. Know? Well, that don't work. Uh, you know, it's this ain't the Catholic Church. For, uh, Go ahead. It's now we we all got these phones with calendars in it. Okay. Uh huh. If you was to get somebody's phone and look at their calendar to see what Bishop Jones just said, they already said this this weekend. We going to this club. We going yeah. this. <laughs> we doing this. Wait, wait a minute. And I'm texting my my boyfriends and girlfriends to yeah. let them know what we gonna be doing. Okay, and we just gonna ask the preacher to be like like Joe. <laughs> yeah. He gonna he gonna offer a sacrifice for y'all. <laughs> y'all making y'all gonna make me preach this morning. Listen, 
<laughs> let me say something to y'all. Y'all, y'all. Let me say something to y'all. To my brother's house. I'm going to my brother's house and don't tell him what I'm going to do. When I get over there. You already know what you're gonna do. You see, that's the thing. You already know you know what you're gonna do. God knows. You God wait, knows. wait, wait, wait. They ain't worried about God oh, knowing. God. They not worried about that. They already premeditated. I'm gonna get with girl old girl and me and old boy go get together. We gonna to do our thing, and then I'm gonna I'm asking God to forgive me now. So I, when I do it. That's crazy. Wait, 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 wait. And in the and in my calendar, I got it that I got to stop by the liquor store. Yeah. <laughs> and get this film <laughs> because we got to get drunk. We got, we got to, to get, get it. We got we got to get to our do drunk on. What we gonna do? Yeah. We gonna get, we gonna get our party on because we getting ready to lay up all weekend. And enjoy ourselves, but I've already asked God to forgive me, and uh, so it's all good. You are on your way to hell. So you need to knock it off. <laughs> well, he protected me while I was doing it. No, he did not. <laughs> no, he didn't. So for those of you that believe that kind of foolishness, and, and, and I'm going to tell y'all something else. Stop trying to set people up. You know, stop trying to set the preacher up. Stop trying to set the preacher's wife up. Stop trying to set them up with all this kind of y'all, 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 y'all got going on in y'all minds, thinking that, you know, you, you just because you heard his voice, seen his little pretty face on the TV, on the TV screen, and you got access to him or her, you know, y'all need to knock it off, leave it alone. Don't go there. Don't you take it there. You know what? That's premeditated. You just premeditated trying to make the preacher fall, trying to make the the woman of God fall, and all that kind of stuff. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to somebody out there, but you you setting it up. So that they can fall and you, they can fall with you. Okay? So you better knock it out. I don't know who I'm talking to. But whoever I'm talking to this morning, I need you to hear me clear. Hear me very clear. God is watching you. He got his eye on you. And the eyes of the Lord, according to the scripture says, is in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. And if you got some evil planning situation with somebody and you think you're getting ready to take them off track god has already beat you there and he's waiting on you amen he's waiting on you and he's gonna get you i guarantee you that he's gonna get you so get that get your mind out the gutter of the enemy because the enemy does not have the authority over what god does he will stop you yes he will and I'm hoping I'm stopping some guy from go leaving his home, his children, and his wife, and all of them, and everybody, and going to see old girl. Uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. Stop where you are. Think about it. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Try to stop your ears up if you want to. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm watching you. And I see you, what you're doing. And you're going to stop this foolishness today. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're going to stop this foolish today. Leave that little boy alone. Who told you that you are a man, that you can have wear the priestly garments that God has established for the men and women of God, and or you women too? Who told you that you can molest children? In Jesus' name. Who told you that? You are of the synagogue of Satan, and you go going to the lake with him. If you don't repent. Amen. Who told you? That's woman or man. You go into the lake. With him. If you don't repent. Amen. And see the thing about it is. The word of God says for we. Now we as believers in Christ. For we must all stand. Before the judgment seat of Christ. And give an account. Of the things that we have done in our bodies. That's right. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Evil. There's a judgment seat of Christ that we have to stand before. You better know it, brother. Best believers. You better know it. We're going to stand before God. Clean and unclean. Goat That's and right. sheep. Righteous and unrighteous. 
Uh-huh. Those that think they righteous are going to stand before God as the unrighteous. You better watch yourself. You better repent. You better repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's coming back again. He is coming back again just like he left here. He's on his way back. And he said, I'm coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any blemish. I'm coming back. And I, when I come back, I'm coming back for mine. And I know who's are mine. So you better, you better be one of them who's are mine. Because otherwise, you're going to be left out and you're going to be left. Amen. You're going to be cast into the lake with the devil and his angels. All right. I'm done preaching this morning. Amen. On the radio and on TV. Amen. That's not what I normally do. Yeah, hey, I heard the truth right here on radio station KBRG. So, y'all get it together. All of you trying to do that little slick stuff. Y'all need to knock it out. God see you. <laughs> yes, he does. Don't be slick. You know, got the good talk about, I, I just need some counseling, pass. You don't need no counseling. You need to repent and get your life right with God. That's what you need to do. And those you female pastors, watch out for them wolves that come in there talking about, for a sister lay hands on, I, I'm going, I need this, I need counseling. Now, nah, now, nah, you need to repent. That's what you need to do. All right? And you need to repent. You know what you're doing. Nobody have to, re- you know what? We don't have to preach over no pulpit to tell you what you're doing. You already know what you're doing. Just repent. We ain't got to have no special sermon to the to, to, to target you to, to, so that you can make you aware of what you're doing. You already know what you're doing. <laughs> so you know it's wrong, you know, so don't do it. Repent. If you go to the pastor and want prayer, that's fine. I'm not saying don't go to no pastor without getting your prayer. You can go to the brothers and get prayer and the sisters and get prayer. Praise God. But don't go there with the motive of thinking you're going to make somebody fall. All right, and don't come this way because I'm gonna I'm gonna bust you out. I, I, I'm serious. They ask these brothers. They will tell you, you come over this way. You know, you think I you think I, you think I'm gonna do it? I sure will. I said, sister, why are you calling me? Well, I need counseling. Well, there's a whole bunch of sisters right there in your neighborhood that you can get counseling from. There's a lot of first ladies around here. How come you calling me? <laughs> you see, so you you better get your act together because I'll bust you out. I will show up, put you on front street. So don't do it. Too many people you can go to right there where you are. You know the Holy Ghost feel, and you know you can talk to them, and they will pray for you, and they will uh, lead you through 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 uh, your your turmoil or the things that you're going through. Stop calling these guys all over the place. And you guys, stop calling these women and, and call, you tell them about you got a word for them. I got a word for you. Repent. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got a word for you. Repent. Stop that. If I get one more phone call to Sister Horn and y'all talk here trying to send her messages and, and all this old kind of stuff, I'm going to bust you out. Do you hear what I said? I'm going to bust you out. I'm gonna put you all on Facebook. I'm gonna put you all on and I got the I got the I got the button. You, all I got you, is to hit one button. There's a lot of it on Facebook, huh? Yes, sir. I will put you out there. I mean that. <laughs> all right. And you keep trying to see send messages mm-hmm. to Pastor Jones' wife and send him secret messages to Sister Wanda and send him messages to Pastor Jones' wife and send him secret messages to Sister Wanda and, and I, I know y'all be doing it. Talking about be my friend. Friend me. Friend of her husband. That's wait, what you wait, need wait, to wait, do. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I know we're out of time, but I just got to do this. Uh, when I get texts like that, I literally had the phone over the one to respond. Uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Don't do. friend me. Do. Don't nasty stuff. Don't friend me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm going to bust why. you out. All right. <laughs> All right. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. I guess he said, Good night. Well, Bishop, I don't want. Yeah, I know what y'all be doing. Call yourselves preachers. Hmm. Ain't no preacher. You're a preacher of the synagogue of Satan. 
you need to repent. We thank you, praise God, for y'all for the, the follow us. I know we done lost a million. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but it's all right. But we got to tell y'all the truth. You know, we lost a million. They was already lost. Yes, sir. But we thank God for you. Continue to pray for us. Continue to pray. We're going to teach y'all the truth. We don't want to tell y'all nothing else. We want y'all to be right with God. We want him. We want your name to be written in the book of life. We don't want you to play with this. Don't play this game because this is not a game. God is not a toy. and You don't want to play with him because when he judges, us, it's going to be right. He don't have to second guess himself. He already knows. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.